In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the intake variable valve timing solenoid on this Ford Flex with a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated engine. Let's get started. If you have an engine cover, go ahead and remove it. Ours is missing, so we're going to move on to removing the uh, intake. First, grab this hose. This goes to the coolant overflow and just pull it aside like this. Then we have this vacuum line right here pull it out of the uh, retainers over here, but be very careful because it's plastic, it's not rubber. So you don't want to snap it and break it. You'll have to replace it if you do. There we go. Now this is released from here. Now let's unplug some connectors over here. Start with this one, set it aside. And you have this line here on the back side, right here, you have these tabs. You want to pinch them in just like this. As you pinch it, you want to push it out like that. There you go. Set this aside also. But again, this is the plastic line, so don't go too far because it will break. Let's unplug the throttle body connection here. Sometimes you'll need a little prying device to help you uh, pry the red lock. Press on the connector and slide it off. Now release the clamp that holds this intake tubing onto the throttle body. Make sure it moves. If you can't pull it off, probably well, needs to be unthreaded a little more. Okay, leave it just like this. Follow the intake further and you'll see that this hose for the PCV is connected to it or this line. Move this clip back and forward kind of like this. It should hold it in the unlocked position so you can pull this off and just set it aside for now. Right over here there's another clamp, eight millimeter socket also. Just unthread the, loosen it up a little bit, unthread the bolt and this should allow you to pull this assembly out of the way here. Okay, just like that. Looks like we have a hose attached over here. So I'm going to unplug it from here. This should be able to slide up now. Set this aside. Unclamp this hose, use some pliers, and uh, twist the hose clamp this way so I can grab it. But uh, once you get the hose clamp released, you should be able to pull the hose off. Sometimes these are a little tight. So just, uh, there we go. Once if you squeeze it enough, this one actually has a lock on it. So you can lock it in the open position and just leave it like that until you're ready to reinstall. A lot of times these rubber hoses will get stuck on here. So use something to very gently pry it, give it a couple twists and it should break free and uh, pop off here. There we go, set that aside over here. Make sure the clamp doesn't fall off. Now we're ready to pull the intake off and we just have to unbolt it at this point. There is one more hose connected to the backside but we can't get to it until we pull it off a little bit. So there is a sequence to removing this intake. You start at this bolt right here which is in the center in the front but towards the driver's side. So one, two, three, four, then you jump over to the driver's side, skip over this one, five, six, and then go back to this one for seven. I'm gonna break them free first using an eight millimeter socket. And then once they're broken free in this sequence, I'm gonna pull them off completely. Now let's remove the bolts completely. It's important to follow the sequence so that you don't potentially damage the intake. You don't want to crack it by accident. Okay, these don't come out, they stay in the intake. So right down here between the throttle body and the intake, you'll see another eight millimeter bolt. You can actually easily reach it underneath the throttle body and uh, break it free. We'll have to remove this one. This is the last thing holding the intake on. Okay, that's broken free. Try 
I'm about to drop the bolt. At this point, the intake should be unbolted and ready to pull up and out. If you have a lot of debris here, I know I have some leaves here, but they're not here, they're underneath. So I'm not gonna worry about them yet. If you do have a lot of debris, like I said, just blow it off or vacuum it at this point. We can pull the intake up and uh, you're gonna have to get this wiring out of the way here. Looks like it's clipped onto the intake. Pry the retainer out. Slide the intake back a little bit and that's only so you can clear these hoses, lines, and wires, and then slide it up and forward, but don't go too far because we still have this hose at the back here. And to disconnect that easily, just grab some pliers, pinch the hose clamp, squeeze it, slide it off, and then move the hose off of here. You can use pliers or a little prying tool to help you slide it off. Set this aside. Now with the upper intake off, we can access everything in the rear. I'm gonna start by unplugging the connectors for the variable valve time solenoids. They have a little lock on them, this purple lock. You have to pry up and in at the same time. Sometimes it'll be a little stuck. There you go, use something to pry up. Unplug this. Unclip the harness from the valve cover. There we go, set that aside. Let's get this large harness removed from the valve cover. Okay, there we go, and we can push that off. Right behind it, it's very difficult to see, but there's a, an oxygen sensor connector. Press on the locking tab, and disconnect the O2 sensor connector, and then we have the retainer that's holding the wire. So the connector that clips onto this retainer, you'll notice that on the base of it right there, it has a little hook. We have to pry that hook down, and I'm explaining this now because you won't actually see once I get my hands in here, but pry that hook down, slide the connector down and off of this retainer, and that's how you get it off of this retainer so we can pull the wiring harness off. <coughs> okay, there's the connector, it popped off. Now let's disconnect the harness from the retainer here on the stud. Just try to get something in here and pry it up and off without actually breaking anything. A lot of times these are very tight on here. Okay, get that off of here. Continuing down the line, unplug, this is uh, for the coolant temp sensor, unplug that connector. Tuck it out of the way and uh, keep popping this harness off of these retainers. We'll need access to all these studs just like this. Let's unplug the ignition coils, pry the locking tabs back a little bit, and then you can press the connector, get it off of here. Just do the same down the line. Be careful with these not to pry too hard or, or you'll break them. And this. Okay, with this off, you don't have to unplug the fuel injectors. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just get this off of here and this off of the back here, and then we'll set the whole harness aside. Okay. There we go. Looks like there's one more retainer over here. Okay. This is the kind that slides over the stud. This harness is loose now. I'm gonna put it over this bracket so it can be out of our way. You don't have to, but you can unplug the fuel injectors so you can set the whole harness to the side like this. You still can't go very far with it, but at least you can get this part out of your way and have a clear shot at the valve cover. Twist this hose a little bit so we can get to the clamp better. Grab it with pliers and slide it up and off, just like this. Pull the hose off and set it aside. Now we have to remove the three ignition coils. Use an eight millimeter socket. With 
the bolts out, you can just pull these straight up. There we go. Sometimes they're a little stuck. I like to put them back right where they came from, so I'm going to keep them in order. You don't have to. It's just good practice. And now we can unbolt the valve cover. Now let's unbolt the valve cover. You want to start in the center and work your way out and go in a cross pattern, kind of. That doesn't have to be perfect. Either way, 10 millimeter socket will remove all of the fasteners. Some are bolts, some are studs. Get them all off. Note that they don't actually come out of the valve cover. They stay here, but make sure they're unthreaded all the way. bolt is all the way in the middle on the left side. A little, little harness connection over here, retainer actually, that I forgot about. Now with that off, you can lift the valve cover up. It's not going to slide right off because first of all, it's going to be somewhat stuck on here. Second of all, we have spark plug tube seals and the seals that go around the VVT solenoids. All of these need to slide straight up before the valve cover actually breaks free. Try to avoid prying on stuff. You can pry very gently, especially here and uh, maybe over here a little bit. Just be very careful what you pry on. You don't want to break the valve cover. You don't want to damage the fuel rail and you don't want to crack the lower intake, which is plastic. best way to do this is to give it a couple wiggles. A lot of times you can get it to break free like that. If not, we'll do some very gentle prying. Okay, there we go. That corner broke free. Let's try over here. Yep. Perfect. Over here, they don't give you much to pry on. gentle again. You don't want to break anything. And if you have a lot of debris here, make sure you clean it up first. Should have mentioned that. Mine, my vehicle is very clean here, so I don't need to worry about it. Get everything out of your way and slide the valve cover up and off. We're replacing the intake solenoid, which is this one. Use an eight millimeter socket, get the bolt out. As you can see, this pops out. As you take this bolt out, make sure you don't drop it in your timing chain area. If you need to, get a, a magnet ready to catch it when it comes out. Okay, there it is. Be careful, like I said, pull it out, take the solenoid out. Should slide off very easily. There it is. Grab the new solenoid, slide it in. Line it up and let's put the bolt back in. Be very careful once again. Okay. 
once you get it close, bottom it out. Once it's bottomed out right here, just give it about an eighth of a turn, nice and snug. That should be plenty tight, and there you have it. Now before the valve cover goes on, we have to clean up the surface of the block here, or the head. This is very clean actually, but there is some corrosion and debris built up around where the gasket goes, and I don't want this potentially getting under the gasket as we slide it on. Also, in this area right here, where the head and the timing cover are split, there is some existing RTV, which we'll have to scrape off. I recommend a razor blade, because you can easily peel it off like this, get it nice and clean. Try not to scrape anything into the engine, if a little bit falls down, it's not the end of the world, but obviously try to avoid it. Scrape away from the engine, just like this. It's never gonna look perfect, but you do wanna clean it up the best you can, get all this debris off. And using a razor blade, in my opinion, is the easiest way to do it because you can scrape it flat, it's not gonna damage the surface, and you have the ability to scrape away from the inside of the engine. So just go around and do the whole surface like this. I have a rag with some brake parts cleaner here. I'm going to degrease the surface. It's important that no oil is here, especially right here where we scraped off the old RTV. We're gonna put on some new RTV. It's important that you don't put too much. I'll show you exactly how much to put, but make sure the whole surface around the valve cover is degreased. You'll have another spot with RTV, symmetrical to this one on the backside right here where it's a little more difficult to see. Basically, it's right where the timing cover meets the head. Now with all of it degreased, Grab some RTV, and I'm using black because it's oil resistant. Put a little bit on, just about this much. You don't need more than this. Any more than this will squish out. On the outside is not a big deal, but you don't want it to get inside the engine. Do the same on the back side here. When you install your valve cover, make sure the gasket isn't falling off. Take the valve cover, slide it on. Be very careful so you don't pinch the gasket or cause it to fall off. Line it up the best you can. Something's getting caught here. There's a wiring harness back here. Make sure that's not getting caught. And I'm gonna feel around to make sure the gasket around the perimeter is still secured and attached to the valve cover, which it is for me. And at this point, you just have to line up the VVT solenoids here. They do move around a little bit, and that's gonna help you line them up, but they still need some persuasion. So I'll push this down, do the same around the uh, spark plug tube seals and once one or more of the mounting hardware lines up thread these on I'm going to start all of them in by hand before I tighten any of them and then I'm going to snug them up going from the center out then we'll come back and torque them let's snug these up okay as soon as the valve cover starts going down that's where I'm going to stop like I said, I'm just bringing these down, nice and bottomed out, but then we'll come back and torque them. Now let's torque the valve cover down. The torque sequence is starting from the outer most bolts towards the inner ones. You wanna start on the rear passenger side on this corner, cut across to the front driver side, then across to this one, and so on and so forth, going across pattern. The torque is 89 inch pounds, which converts to 7.4 foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench that can go that low or for some reason doesn't fit in here, just make them nice and snug with a quarter inch ratchet. 7.4 foot pounds is not a lot.
Now that they're all torqued, I'm going to go around one more time. This time I'm just going to go in a circle because they are properly torqued. But with rubber gaskets like these or silicone, the gasket will squish down and the first few bolts that you tighten are now loose because the last few that you tighten crushed that gasket and created slack on the first ones. Let's get this PCV hose back on, slide it over all the way down, grab the hose clamp with some pliers, bring it down. Make sure you don't put it all the way down here to where it's going to come off the hose, but not all the way up where it's bending either. Like this is perfect. Now we can put the ignition coils in. Before I put them in, I put a little bit of silicone paste on the end. If you don't necessarily have to, but I recommend it. This will prevent moisture from building up between this and the spark plug, and it will allow the boot not to get stuck in the future. A lot of times they get stuck from heat cycles over time. Slide all three down. Put the three mounting bolts in. And let's snug them up. Make sure they're nice and tight. Once they bottom out, give them about an eighth of a turn. That should be plenty tight. Let's put the wiring harness back over. Try to line it up the best you can here. Had several areas where it was locked in, especially on the back side of the valve cover. It locked in here with this, just like this. On the studs, it had these retainers that slip over and lock in, as well as back here. On the front, I'm going to connect the connectors as I go. So I'll put the ignition coils on, lock them all down. I'll put the injectors in, make sure these click. Now let's secure the harness down with the retainers that slide over the studs, one on the corner, one over here, and another one right here. This connector is for the coolant temp sensor that we unplugged. Plug that back in, set it down and out of the way. Follow the harness along. Over here you'll see another tab that secures it here. And don't forget to plug in the VVT solenoids. You can't really mix them up because one wire is shorter than the other. So as long as you secure it here, they won't reach to the wrong one. Now let's put the O2 sensor in, which is all the way at the back here. Make sure it clicks. This was supposed to be secured here, but unfortunately my retainer broke, so I can't re-secure it. But it is out of the way of everything, so that's good. Now let's get the upper intake on. Make sure all the gaskets are still in position. Mine are. Before we completely put it on, we need to reattach this hose at the back here. It'll be a lot easier to do it now rather than after this is already in. So make sure it's bottomed out completely. Just like that. Now let's grab some pliers, get that clamp on. Position it right about where it was before. Now we can line up the rest of the intake with the lower intake. Make sure you don't pinch any wires or hoses in here. Get these out of the way. There we go. That lines up perfectly right there. Manually start in the bolts so that you can make sure that not only are they not cross-threading, but if they all start in, you know you're perfectly lined up so you have nothing else to worry about. Okay, one more over here, and one more back here. Okay, before I attach anything else, I'm going to tighten this down so that other than that hose in the back, nothing is putting pressure on it. Not that the hoses or the wires would put pressure on it, but I just want it to seat perfectly and I want to know that it's installed fully. I'm going to snug these down with my 8mm socket, and then the sequence for this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then cross over 5, 6 then back to the middle, number seven. Remember, there is one more bolt that goes underneath the throttle body all the way in the back on that bracket, but we'll worry about that later. That one is not part of the sequence. Just make them snug, I'm not torquing them yet. Okay. 
and double check the first few. Okay, now let's torque them to 89 inch pounds in the same sequence, and then we'll do an additional 45 degrees after the 89 inch pounds. 89 inch pounds is about 7.4 foot pounds. That's 89 inch pounds for all of them, but I will go over it again because as with all rubber gaskets, the first few might loosen up as you tighten the last few. And because we have degrees involved to finish torquing them, you wanna make sure that your base torque, which is a foot pound number, is correct. If your initial torque or the base torque is not right, once you do the degrees, the ones that are not properly tightened will be off to a different final torque. I have a torque wrench that reads degrees, so I have it set to 45 degrees, but if you don't have this, you can just use a ratchet or a little breaker bar and go an eighth of a turn. You can either mark the bolt or just visually look at it as you're turning. That's it right there, same sequence. At this point, they're all torqued. You don't wanna to touch the bolts anymore. If you doubt yourself, you're gonna to have to loosen them up and start all over again. If you continue tightening or even loosening at this point, you completely ruin the procedure that we just did. And the final torque will be out of spec. Underneath the throttle body, if you follow it, it's very difficult to see, but there's gonna be that bracket that had a bolt going through it. We uh, removed it with an extension, slide that bolt in, get this started, bottomed out, and tightened down. nice and snug. Let's reconnect all the connectors and hoses around the throttle body here. Connect the throttle body itself. Make sure that clicks. You didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, but I felt it. Lock the connector in. Now let's put this hose back on this valve here. Lock it down and connect the electrical connector for it. Make sure that clicks. Next we had a vacuum hose over here. Slide that over, bottom it out all the way. Let's get this clamp back on here, lock that hose on. This was uh, just pointed down over here. This coolant hose that goes across was secured on these plastic retainers. And then this vacuum line, actually it's just a plastic line, secures itself onto the retainers on the fuel rail. Let's put the air intake duct back. Slide it over the air filter housing and make sure that on the bottom, this lip doesn't roll over. You want it to seat on the housing just like this. There we go, press it on all the way. Now, on this side, put it over the throttle body. Once again, make sure it seats. All the way around, just like this, give it a couple spins to ensure this hose goes back on here this one back on here make sure this clicks now with this situated properly let's tighten up the two hose clamps eight millimeter socket one over here don't make them very tight just snug these strip out easily and once they 
If they do, you have to replace it with a new one. Just like that, perfect. Now, if you had an engine cover, you'd put it back on. It goes onto these grommets here, but ours is missing, so we don't have anything to put back on. At this point, you can do the same to the front part of the engine or the, the front bank. The only difference is gonna be to get this hose off. Well, you're gonna have to pry on this locking tab. And then you may have to disconnect this wiring harness differently, uh, such as following it up there and pulling it off so you can set it aside. But other than that, the procedure is the same. Now, because the valve cover was off, as always, I strongly recommend an oil change. Now with the engine back together, make sure it runs nice and smooth. You shouldn't have any vacuum leaks. And if there is something wrong, just double check all of your electrical connectors, fuel injectors, ignition coils, other plugs, make sure everything is reconnected properly. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.